Kia ora. Welcome to Wake Up New Zealand. I'm Blake. And I'm Damak. In today's stories, a new crime wave is sweeping the country in form of woolen graffiti. Scientists have invented an invisibility cloak. We helped them find it. And, it, and the le- la- latest weather report. But first up, if you think the world is getting more and more topsy-turvy, <clears throat> it turns out you're right. Builders of Germany have built an upside-down house which rests on its roof. Inside there are beds screwed into the ceiling, upside-down wardrobe, an upside-down kitchen, and even an upturned bathroom. Hate to be under that. We cross now to a reporter, Noam. Noam. Thank you. Today, I'm here with the owner of this crazy house, Memphis Hughes, and the builder of this house, Penny Darm. What an honour it is to have you guys here today. I just want to ask you guys a couple of questions about this crazy house. My first one is, why would you want to build this house? What was your inspiration? Um, I decided to build this house because my dog died. I'm sorry for your loss. And he died upside down in a cement truck. I'm sorry about that. But we have to move on. <laughs> I'm sorry. What are some of your favourite things about living in this completely upside down house? Um, it's nothing uh, that, that good in the house. It's pretty bad. But at least I get to stay off my dog because he's in the walls with the cement. I'm glad you can still be with him. With this house being completely upside down, surely there will be some challenges living in this house and building this house. Could you please list some of those challenges? Um, yeah, some of the challenges is when I go to sleep. Well, I try to go to sleep. It's pretty hard to, though, because my dog's always barking in the walls. I don't know if he's alive or not. He's always just haunting the house, and I have to um, just grab my teddy bear and, yeah. Yeah, and what were some of the challenges for building the house? Mainly the foundation. Yeah, I bet. Well, thank you guys. Back to Blake and Dymock at the desk. Now for a story that is truly out of sight. Scientists in Europe have created an invisibility cloak, which can hide objects by blending light waves. However, since inventing the invisibility cloak, scientists have been having trouble trying to find it. They say every time they put it somewhere, it just disappears. Hola, besties. I'm Smoggins, and with me is Roosh, the scientist behind the invisibility cloak. So, Mo- what made you want to invent this invisibility cloak? Well, you see, I'm getting broke every day. So, I went to the bank, stole some money, and it didn't work. So, I decided to make an invisibility cloak and then go steal money from the bank. And now I came back with um, Lamborghinis and um, two mansions. Wow, can you show me how the invisibility cloak works? All right, hold this. Don't drink it, my alcohol. Um, so this is um, the invisibility cloak. All you do is wear it and then you're invisible. Wow, that's pretty cool. Here's your drink bottle. Alcohol. What do you hope the cloak will be used for? Um, pranking, um, and murdering. Well, (laughs) that makes things very clear. Thanks for joining us and back in the studio. Thank you, Smoggins. Next up, there's a new wave of graffiti crime covering the country, thanks to an underground gang known as the Midnight Knitters. Without permission, these illegal criminals are covering tree branches and lampposts with jerseys and scarves in the dead of night. Police say we're stitching to your case, no pun intended, but there's really, but there's no real pattern to the crime. We cross now to Molly with an exclusive interview. Thanks, Blake. I'm Molly, and joining me is a member of the Midnight Knitters gang. Yo, Jason, and thanks for joining us. What led you into the dark underworld of knitted graffiti? Darkness rumours around alleyways. I see. Do you see yourself as a criminal? Why or why not? Not because the place is so dark that I needed to break everything with my game. I see. Apart from trees and lampposts, what else would you like to graffiti with? My, n- my neighbour's house. They're so annoying that I had to raid them 12 times. Hmm. Thanks for your time. Back to you all at the news desk. 
Well, at least they'll be warm if they get caught and go to jail. Now, let's have a look at the weather up and down the country with Adam. What's in store? Thanks, Dominic. Let's have a look at tomorrow's weather. In Auckland, there'll be a mix of fair conditions and unfair conditions, but those are the conditions and you'll just have to accept them. There'll be no weather at all for Hamilton. It's taking a short holiday, but is expected to be back for the weekend. Wellington will have another capital day with no wind at all, so keep calm and carry on. Christchurch will be cold and unfriendly until late morning. Then the sun will pop over for a visit. Everybody likes the sun. That's all for me. Now it's back to the news desk. Thank you, Adam. Finally, it's time for two minutes with... Logan Paul. Who is talking to an unusual world champion. Over to you, Logan. Logan. Hello, and welcome to Two Minutes with me, Logan Paul. It, it's a microphone. I like it, Picasso. <laughs> Joining me today is Andrew Tate, who has, just, who has just been crowned the world's greatest liar. Hello, Andrew. What's the most outrageous lie you've ever told? That I have four... No, Five Bugattis, not six. Do you lie all the time or is it just when you're competing? All the time. Are you lying to me right now? Drop check. Rate me. Um, nine and a half. Anyway, back to the question. Are you lying to me right now? I know. <laughs> well, thanks for joining me. I'm Logan Paul and back to the news desk. <laughs> Well, that's all we have time for. We hope you've enjoyed today's show. And thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time. Until then, I'm Dominic. And I'm Blake for Wake Up New Zealand. Good night. Goodbye. Good night. Good night. No! Let's go. Come on, come on, go. No, go to the back. Go to the back. <laughs>